So, 10 years worth of work after SVG was finished, and it's almost universally available. There's other stuff that's coming to the web really, really fast. A lot of the, the cool applications you know, on your iPhone or your Android phone, a lot of cool software, makes use of the fact that it has access to the device. Right? You have geolocation, you have a GPS, you have an address book in your phone. You can send SMSs. If you write code for the web, it can't do any of those things. It can you know, present some stuff on the screen. You can click on it. Maybe you can use the keyboard to navigate it. And then it all goes back to the server, and the server does some processing and sends you information back. You don't know anything about the user. That's been the case for 20 years, and there's one very good reason why. This information is amazingly sensitive. When I put my credit card number into a website and somebody intercepts it, they can go and steal, well, actually my credit card's probably overdrawn, so they can't take anything. But if I had a credit card that worked, they could take you know, hundreds of dollars away from me. If I put my physical location up where people can get it on the web, they know where I am. All right. You know, someone already did it. The, the organizers of COSCUP, who are nice people, by the way, and do great things, told the whole world that today I will be sitting in this hall, standing in this hall. That means I'm not at home. Right? If I had a fancy car, that would mean I would not be watching my fancy car. If I had three small kids, that means I would not be watching my three small kids. It's not such a problem. But when you have a device that follows you around, when any web application can find out where you are and where your kids are and where your friends are and whether you're at home or on your own somewhere you shouldn't be, whether you are the kind of person who spends a lot of time in very expensive shops or whether you're the kind of person who never goes anywhere that you can shop and never goes near a bank and probably doesn't have a dollar in their pocket, that kind of information becomes important security information. So privacy matters. Right? Security matters. It doesn't matter to users until five minutes after they discover they had a problem. Now, nobody cares about privacy and nobody cares about security until it's too late. And when it's too late, they come and blame browsers because we're the ones that let them get into trouble. So that's why we've been reluctant to open this stuff up. It's why we want to make sure the security stuff matters. We can do things like this. Da, 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 da. They want to know where I am. Let's see. This particular application is sending information to Google. Google is sending information back. And let's see if they can find me. I don't know. Can anyone recognize where I am from this? That's not here? That's far away. Sorry? It's good security, right. <laughs> you know, it works by figuring out what Wi-Fi points are around. So, for example, if the Wi-Fi points around here normally live somewhere else, then that might explain why it's somewhere else. I did it this morning. Uh, so, this morning, Google claimed I was here on this spot. That's not quite true. My room in the hotel is more like 
here. When we do this in Oslo, quite often we get an accuracy of two or three meters. So that's quite cool if you want to build apps. As I said, privacy matters, security matters. But if you want to build cool applications, having this kind of resolution location in a normal browser, that's really, really cool. So long as the user is in control of when they tell you, you can do things that are actually exciting. Not just, where am I, find my way around. Uh, does anyone know of Jill and or Bondi? Jill is an initiative by Vodafone, uh, China Telecom, and a couple of others to make more of these APIs. Bondi is a different one. They came up, two groups working independently, came up with two sets of specifications for how you would do this. Simple JavaScript APIs like geolocation, but for SMS for billing using your phone, for access to your camera. Very cool stuff. Two small closed groups working in private. They produced rubbish. Yeah. When we sat down to implement what they you know, worked on very, very fast and very, very secretly, it was garbage. They hadn't asked enough people they hadn't put it in front of people who are testing and implementing. And when we tried to implement these specs, honestly, what happened is we would get the spec and the engineers would say, it's impossible to understand what they want to do and what they mean. And we'd write back and we'd say, what do you mean by this? And they'd say, oh, it's top secret, we can't tell you. And we'd say, but you're paying us to make it work. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, and they'd go away again, and they'd come back, and they'd say, yeah, actually, we're not sure. What do you think it should mean? So it took quite a long time after these things were finished to make them you know, more or less usable. They've learned, or the people who did this have learned from their mistakes. They're now working in a much bigger group to do the same thing again, to have one set of standards, which they are also working on at W3C. So they're open, and people can go and look at it and say, wait a minute, you know, you've done a good job on the things you were thinking of, but you've missed something. Please fix this up. That's what open standards give you. And when you have SMS access, when you have access to your contacts, you can do things like write the application I wrote uh, two or three weeks ago, which is a geolocation and SMS and your contacts database. It's two pages of JavaScript. It just looks like some buttons, so there's not much to show. But if you pick someone out of your contact database, you send them an SMS, you, know, you just click to run this application for them, and it sends them a message saying where you are and asks the application running on their phone to tell you where they are. And it's help me find you, and you need to actually say, yes, I'm prepared to tell this person where I am, but it's trivial to write. You know, you've seen my code, and I made it work. And once it works, because it's the web, it works everywhere. I can put a runtime onto a five-year-old Nokia phone and use this application. I can put it onto a Macintosh, plug in a GSM card so that it can actually send an SMS, and it'll work. I can buy the shiniest, newest, most exciting Android device, put a runtime on it, and the same application works, exactly the same. This is cool for developers. Right? This is what's good about the web. It doesn't only work on the greatest, newest devices. 
it works on old devices. And at Opera Mini, we're working on making stuff like this work on 10-year-old phones. Because if you walk around you know, most African capital cities, almost every single person owns a mobile phone. You can buy a mobile phone on every second street corner because there's a guy with a table selling second-hand or third-hand phones. The mobile phone is the most popular piece of electronics ever. Right? More people have phones than radios. More people have phones than computers by a million zillion miles. So giving people access to information and technology, making it work on phones, that changes the world. That's actually very cool stuff that you can do. And giving developers access to everybody who has a phone, that's the most enormously huge market there is. Everybody who has any money at all has a phone. And quite a lot of people who have almost no money have a phone. And the reason is, if they get a phone, it's easier to make money. Right? Mobile, mobile phones are one of the things that makes poor people richer. So getting all this stuff to work there is fairly cool. I'm going to wind up talking a little bit about accessibility. Uh, HTML4 you could do a few things. You had access keys, so you could make keyboard shortcuts. You could put alt on an image. Who has put an image into a web page or into a blogging service like Flickr or Picasa? Who's posted an image on the web? Everybody who's awake. Who has made sure that image has an alternative text on it, a label so people can read it? At least once. Who has put an image and not done that? That's me. Right? <laughs> it's bad. Don't ever do that. <laughs> I can tell you it's bad. I've done it. I know it's bad. <laughs> but you know, we don't do everything perfect all the time. They set up this whole conference and there's no glass of wine here. There are two things in HTML5, HTML4, long desk and summary, that are not in HTML5. And there are arguments why not and arguments why. The fundamental argument for removing some things from HTML is they are dark data. They're invisible. When you copy and paste your web page and write a new version, you don't see the long desk attribute. You don't see the summary attribute. So you just leave the same old data in it. And it's broken. It's confusing and misleading and wrong. And so the argument goes, you should take it out. You should remove those things because they cause problems. The question I have is, all right, so in some cases it's broken, but in some cases it's not broken. If it's not always broken, should you throw away all of the good stuff with all of the bad stuff? Right now, the discussion in the HTML working group says, for long desk and summary, yes, throw it all away. You just don't have any ability to do that. I disagree with that. I will be arguing you know, again that they should actually change.